Hey everyone, how's it going? Clifton here with another video. Today we're picking up from my In Real Life or IRL Streaming Setup series, in which we're covering everything I use for IRL streaming. In the previous videos, we've looked at the gear and software I use when I'm out in the field. Most of what I've covered already is stuff I already own, like my iPhone, my partner's old Android device, headset for better audio. The only new things I bought were inexpensive items, like the chest mount for around $20. Anyway, Put simply, my iPhone takes the video signal from the Larix Broadcaster app and sends it to my computer at home. In my home office, I have three desktop applications, which makes IRL streaming for me possible. Firstly, gonna look at OBS Studio. This is a streaming app for desktop computers. It takes all your video and audio and sends that to a service like YouTube. In my case, it takes the video signal from Larix Broadcaster as a browser source in OBS and sends that to Twitch. If you're wondering why I don't skip the home computer and stream directly to Twitch, this is why. My home computer handles what you see when the stream is starting soon, ending soon, the BRB scene you see when my mobile connection is down, custom alerts for tips, raids, channel point redemptions, and more. With that lengthy introduction out of the way, let's begin by installing the first of our three desktop apps. OBS Studio. So we're going to go through to the OBS Studio website rather than trying to download it from here which will install the exe file we want to download the zip. Now it will take a little while for it to download and finish and we'll just skip past this part. We're going to open up the main folder for our OBS installation and we're going to create a new text document. There you go, the text document. You just need to rename this to portable underscore mode.txt and that's all you need in order for this instance of OBS Studio to be portable. Okay, and we just need to download and install StreamerBot. So we'll save that to the desktop as well. Save. And then finally we're going to install Loopy SRT Stats Monitor. Okay, so here we've got folders for each one of our main applications that we'll be using for streaming. We're going to dig into the folders for our OBS installation and you'll find obs64.exe and it does have this auto configuration wizard when you first open up OBS Studio. So we'll just choose the first one for now. And then you can choose your base resolution. I think what we've got here is fine. And then the service, which service will you be connecting to? Uh, choose your preferred platform. But for me, in this example, we'll just continue with Twitch. Let's just click next. This is our new instance of OBS. I'm going to close this window. I'm going to resize this and move it to the side. Or let's just make a few changes. You know, you'll want to tweak and then change things to how you want it. But this is kind of like my, my sort of preferred layout. We have now got OBS looking good. We're happy with the layout, at least I am with this layout. It works for me. I can see where the scenes are. I can see where the sources are within those scenes. We'll get into that in a second. I know where to start and stop my stream. I can start recording. I can see the audio mixer. So we'll want to create a couple of scenes first. Now we've got one scene there called scene, not very helpful, but we can right click and rename that. We'll call this starting soon. So there's our very first scene. Then we'll create a new scene and we'll call this one web camera. So that could be for IRL or for anything. We'll add another scene, we'll call this one BRB. And then we'll add one more scene, which is uh, ending soon. I'm just gonna keep this super simple. We're gonna go to the starting soon scene. And then below our scenes, we've got our sources. Now on this panel, we're going to add just a plain text box. Call this text box starting soon. Now I do recommend that you have a naming system, something so that once you've got a lot of these, it's going to be easier to tell one thing from the other. So we'll go with this for now. We'll click OK. And then within the text field, we're just going to type in starting soon. We're going to right click we could go to transform and then center to screen. Super simple. I'm gonna click this padlock icon here. So it's gonna lock it in place. If you go, oops, I didn't mean to do that. You can do control Z, undo. So we've got our starting soon screen. We're going to right click and copy. Under BRB, we're gonna right click and paste a duplicate. And then we are going to rename this one. So F2 to rename for our text field. So you just double click BRB click OK 
And then we are going to go to ending soon, right click, paste duplicates, padlock, locked. So now we've got a starting soon, got a BRB scene, and then we've got ending soon. Now for webcam, you can right click, add a video capture device. So click OK. And then this is where you could choose your capture device. Just choose this one and so it's not being used. Right click the source in the preview window, transform, fit to screen. But of course, this doesn't help us when we're doing IRL streaming. What you'd want to do there is to add a browser source instead. And we're going to leave this empty for now. So we've got the fundamentals in place for us to stream from our version of OBS here on the desktop. But there are the other two components that I talked about that will complement OBS here. Now, one of those is Streamerbot, and we'll get into that part next. Okay, so I'm gonna open up Streamerbot. Streamerbot is what's gonna handle all your commands. So the commands that I've mentioned in the other videos, like starting soon, typed in chat, Streamerbot will pick up on those, and then it'll tell OBS to do what you want it to do. So that's Streamerbot in a nutshell. So it's kind of the two things in tandem. Let's say a viewer comes into chat and you go, oh, I wanna play a special video clip for that person. Now, if you were to try and do everything yourself, you would just turn the source on and off. The problem is you would like that to be automated rather than having to hunt through all your different scenes. And that's what Streamerbot does and does really well. So it can handle channel point redemptions. It can handle commands that are typed in chat. And the best part about it, what you do here on your desktop computer will work on your mobile phone. We'll go to actions and we're going to create a new action. Click add. We're going to call this one start stream. So we've got our group called starting soon with one action and then we've got our action. Under sub actions, this is where we'll go to add sub actions. We're going to go to OBS and then there'll be an action here for start stream. So let's just try and find it streaming. Now we don't have this yet connected, so we'll need to connect it. We we'll need to go to OBS Web Sockets, right click, add, and then you want to add your details for OBS. Firstly, make sure that we're on version five because the version of OBS that I'm using is 28. And then we're just gonna copy in the details. So I'm just gonna paste in my info. I'm probably gonna have to hide this. So it's connected now. Just make sure you got that all connected. We'll just go back into OBS Web Socket settings enable WebSocket server. I changed my server port because I've already got an instance of OBS open. And once it's connected, then it's going to be able to know what scenes, what sources you've got within OBS. So if we go back to our action here, right click, add sub actions. So now these will be able to work because it's connected to OBS. So we're going to say, yes, we want to start the stream. Let me just close this. I'm going to go into my settings. I need to make sure that bandwidth test mode is currently on. That's because we don't want it to actually go live to my Twitch account, not, not today. You do need to turn that off if you do want to actually go live. And it's very important when IRL streaming, you've got a way to turn that off or a way to check that it's on or off before you start streaming, okay? Because you won't be able to stream if you've already left the office, left home, you're let's say miles away. And if you find out the bandwidth test mode is on, you have to head back to your office to turn it off. But yeah, we've got an action there to start streaming. We're gonna go down here. We're gonna right click, duplicate this action. And then for the second one, we're going to edit it. So right click edit. We're going to call this action stop stream. So pretty straightforward. Click the sub action. And then this one is going to stop the stream. So I've got actions, but how do you activate them? Well, there is another section here called commands. And under commands, we're going to right click add a new command. And we're going to call this one starting soon. And then we're going to make the location of that text to be exact. So it actually has to be those words. Also, you can enable it so that maybe it's just moderators or subscribers or VIPs can activate this command. In our case, we just want it to be us. Under this list, user permissions, it'll often bring up a list of everyone in your chat. And you are usually one of those people. Select yourself from the available list and that only you can run a certain command. But we'll just for now, we'll have it for moderators. They're the only ones who can activate the starting soon command. But we need it to run an action. So this button here for actions, we're just gonna scroll through and then find our start stream action. So we'll select that, we're gonna click OK. So I've got one action starting soon. I'm going to add another action and we will call this one ending. 
soon. Likewise, when I choose our action, stop stream, and then make sure only moderators can activate that action. So now we've got the two commands in there. If we go over to our chat, I'm gonna type in starting soon. So this is if I'm at home here in the office. You should see that button under controls activate. So let's give it a go, let's find out. The streamer bot here doesn't recognize that I am a, a moderator. So we'll need to connect. We will go back to our actions and then try that again. Now this should work now. Starting soon. And there we can see, this is my Twitch account. Uh, sure enough, it is not live currently. And it is saying that to stop streaming, all we have to do is click this button. Of course, we will need to press the button unless we are IRL streaming. So we could type it in like we did with starting soon, but instead I'm gonna use the phone that I, I mentioned in the other videos. I'm gonna jump into IRL chat as well. That is now connected. By rights, if I type in that command, enter, and you can see now the command is showing up in OBS and also it's no longer streaming. I imagine because this is a mobile phone, I don't actually need to be here in the office to run these commands. I can be IRL streaming. Just as long as this phone here and IRL chat is connected to Twitch, the commands I run on here will work wherever I am. There is my chat. There's where I've entered in the commands, ending soon and starting soon. Now, I did mention in the other video, overlays. So let's just make a call cool alert or overlay. And we'll just put it on our webcam scene. I found this alert, which I use as a channel point on my, my main account. So we'll just drag the video clip from a folder on my computer into the same scene as web camera. There is our video clip. It's just over the top of everything else, but we're gonna make the visibility of it off because it won't replay unless you turn it off and then turn it back on again. So let's go back into our actions. We're gonna create a new action and group, call this one channel point redemptions. You do need to be affiliate or you could have it run as a command. In fact, we'll do both. Cliff as Gandalf. We are going to add a sub action OBS source visibility state. We are going to try and find our new source. Uh, it's quite easy to find. It's under webcam scene. We're going to duplicate sub action and then we're going to make the visibility uh, hidden. Now the video clip will tell us how long it is, 17 seconds. So we'll need to add a delay, otherwise it'll go visible and then invisible straight away. So we'll add a delay, right click sub action and then delay. Let's add a little bit of a buffer to the end. So 17,500. That's it for our call alert and function. Now if we go back to commands, I'm gonna right click, add a command and we're gonna call this one exclamation mark Gandalf. We're gonna make sure this is exact. And it's only available for moderators. We're going to choose our action, which is here. Cliff is Gandalf. Click select. OK. And then we are going to go back into our chat window. Remember, this will work from a mobile phone or from wherever. And then we'll just type in Gandalf. It'll suddenly start playing our cool alert. And this is just through the use of commands. There are channel points you can use as well. So as an affiliate, I have various channel points available. These are the ones that I've set up for my account. Now, if we go through to this section, Channel Point Rewards, it does have the list of rewards that you've got for your account, the ones that you create. And you can create Channel Point Rewards through Streamerbot, and I do recommend that you do that. Now, we've got one here for Gandalf. If we double click on that, you'll just see all the details for the Channel Point Redemption. But what we want to do is to actually run an action. Most of the stuff we're going to ignore because we've already set that up, but we do have this section here, Action. Click that button. And then we're going to choose Cliff as Gandalf. And then we want that to play when this channel point redemption is put through. Let's go find our Gandalf channel point redemption. I'm going to redeem it. And then it's going to play that action for us. So there you go. There is another part of what I have for my setup. 